Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to install an SSD in a late 2012 27-inch iMac. You should watch this video in its entirety before attempting this upgrade. You'll need to disassemble much of your iMac, which can be a very tricky process, so professional installation is recommended. We've already gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the iMac, and are working on a soft static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The display on the iMac is held in place with an adhesive around the edges which you'll have to cut apart. This is a tricky process which runs the risk of cracking the display, so you'll need to be very careful. Starting on one of the lower corners, insert the screen removal tool between the glass and the chassis. Work along all the edges of the iMac, taking care not to push out on the glass. All we're doing is cutting the tape holding the display on, not prying the glass away. The process may take a little bit, and you may need to go over sections multiple times, so be patient. The corners may be a little tricky. Make sure the tool is right up against the chassis to make sure all the tape is cut. When near the camera, you may feel some bumps as the tape is thin here. Continue around the iMac until you reach the other side. You may now lay the iMac face up on your work surface and attach the suction cups to the upper corners. Do one last check to make sure you've loosened all the adhesive around the edges of the iMac, then lift up on the glass using the suction cups until you can see the cables inside. The outermost cable should slide right out of its socket. To detach the innermost cable, first lift up on the black plastic tab to unlatch it, then slide it out of its socket as well. You can then angle the display the rest of the way up and remove the adhesive holding the bottom of the display. Simply grab the tab on each side of the screen and slowly pull it towards the center until it comes free. Finally, use your opening tool to slit any remaining adhesive along the center edge and you should be able to remove the display and set it aside. Next, we'll want to peel up any of the adhesive remaining around the edges of the iMac. Then, do the same thing on the display itself. To get at the back side of the logic board, we'll need to remove several pieces. First, we'll want to move the IMAX left speaker. Do this by loosening these two Torx T10 screws, then disconnecting the power button cable attached to the power board, and finally the speaker cable. You should now be able to move the speaker over and place the cable out of the way. Next, we'll need to remove these two Torx T10 screws holding in a drive bracket. You should then be able to slide the drive out of the bay Disconnect the SATA cables and set it aside. We can now move on to the power board. The first thing you'll want to do is disconnect this ribbon cable by sliding one of the ends out of its connector and peeling it up from the board. Next, remove these two longer Torx T10 screws that hold the board in. Then, remove these two near the lip of the iMac, which are shorter than the previous two.
carefully lift the power board up by the edges and maneuver it out from its space and turn it to reveal two more cables to disconnect. The first one is located on the underside of the logic board. Press the tab on the connector to unlatch it and slide the connector straight out. Then, do the same for the smaller connector on the power board itself. You can then set the power board aside. Next, we need to remove the fan. First, disconnect its controller cable by simply sliding it from its socket. Then, remove the three Torx T10 screws that hold it in place. Finally, peel back the tape holding the fan to the heatsink and you should be able to remove it from the iMac. Next, we need to move the right side speaker out of the way. Loosen these two Torx T10 screws and you should be able to move the speaker over like you did the other one. Now we need to disconnect several cables from the logic board. Start with the cable near the chassis. This one simply lifts up and out of its socket. Next, slide the speaker cable out of its socket. Detach the camera cable by first lifting up on the black tab to unlock the handle, then slide it out of its connector. Finally, we need to disconnect the antenna cables. To help when reattaching them later, simply take a small piece of tape and use it to keep them in order. Then, simply lift the cables up and off their snap connectors. But you need to be extremely careful as these connectors are surface mounted and quite fragile. Now we can start removing the screws that hold the logic board in place. Start with these two Torx T10 screws which are longer than the others. Next, remove these four Torx T10 screws which are considerably shorter. Then, loosen the captive Torx T10 screw located through this hole in the logic board. To remove this metal standoff, we'll need a Torx T25 screwdriver. The final two Torx T10 screws we need to remove hold the heatsink to the chassis. Slide the SATA cable out from underneath the drive retainer and we're ready to lift the logic board out of the iMac. Carefully lift up the logic board and begin to slide it out. Note that the card reader may catch on the lip of the iMac so you may need to adjust your angle as you go. Once the logic board is clear, we can remove it fully from the iMac. The notch in the SSD module lines up with the pin in the SSD socket on the iMac. Simply line up the two pieces, slide them together, and secure the SSD module with its Torx T5 screw. You can now slide the logic board back into place, again angling it to allow any surface mount components to pass. Replace the two Torx T10 screws that hold the heatsink in place.
Then slide the SATA connector under the hard drive bracket. Next, replace the Torx T25 metal standoff. We can now replace the Torx T10 screws that hold the logic board in place. Start with the two longest screws which go in these two spots. Then replace the four shorter screws in the remaining holes. Finally, tighten down the captive screw under the hole in the logic board. Now we can start reconnecting the logic board cables. Start with the flat cable in the corner. Its connector simply lines up over the top and presses into place. The right speaker cable slides into its connector. You can now reattach the antenna cables by aligning them over their connectors and carefully pushing them until they snap together. Be careful, as these can be delicate components. Remove the tape from the cables when you're done. Next, reattach the camera cable by sliding the connector into its slot, then locking it into place with the handle. We can now slide the speaker back into place and secure it with its two Torx T10 screws. Replace the fan by first setting it into place and securing it with its three Torx T10 screws. Then, slide its controller cable connector back into its slot and use the tape on the heatsink to once again attach it to the fan. Reattach the power board by first reattaching the small cable to the connector in the corner of the board. Then, do the same with the larger cable and its connector on the underside of the logic board. You can then maneuver the board back into place. Take the longer power board screws and use them to secure the innermost spots. Then, use the smaller screws to secure the board near the IMAX lip. Next, slide the thicker cable into its connector and press down on it so that it once again adheres to the board. Make sure the speaker cable is out of the way, then reattach the hard drive to the SATA connector, set the unit back into place, and secure it with its two Torx T10 screws. Set the speaker cable in the channel next to the hard drive, then move the left speaker back into place and tighten it down. You can now reconnect the power button cable by sliding it into its slot on the power board. Finally, run the speaker cable along the edge of the hard drive and slide it into its connector. Next, we need to put the display tape pieces in place, following the placement instructions on the sheet that came with your kit. The piece numbers will follow clockwise from the upper left corner. 
Peel off the backing of each piece and set it in place using some small screwdrivers or other thin tool to align the holes in the tape with the holes in the iMac frame. For the two lower pieces, the tape needs to go on the display rather than on the chassis. Make sure you have the corner pieces tight around the edges. Once you have all the pieces set, you can then peel off the backing on the other side to expose the adhesive that will attach the display. Set the display along the bottom edge, as flush with the lip and as centered as possible, but don't let it close yet as we need to reconnect the video cables. Reattach the centermost cable by sliding the connector into its socket and locking it into place with the handle. Then, simply slide the outermost connector into its socket and press the cable into its channel. You can now carefully lower the display into place, making sure you have the edges lined up correctly. Gently squeeze along the edges to make sure the adhesive sticks. You can now remove the suction cups. Then use the microfiber cloth to remove any fingerprints or suction cup marks. 